probably going to make like a 20 minute round around campus. Today was the very first day. How convenient that it's so <coughs> to get tested out in the snow. I guess that's great. Um, I don't know how many people used it today. I was very tempted myself, but I did not leave the building today. <laughs> Just used once. It. You used it today. How was it, Dr. Penfield? It was fine. Great. It was fine. And there were yeah. eight other people on it when I used it. Eight other people from the student union up to around the top. Um, so that, that's good. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that and that that's available for you to use. And I'm sure that, you know, if there are some things that we need to change about within the coming weeks, those will be changed. But I guess there's a list. Do I, can we wait till after my announcements are done or is this germane to the topic? I guess we'll talk about it now. Why not? So who's on the list? Okay. Uh, Representative Sanchez. Okay. I also used it today and I was speaking with the driver. She said there was over 30 people used it. Um, but originally I believe it said they would be able to use put two wheelchairs on the shuttle bus. That's what we were told. Yeah, um, when I was on there, she said that it's only people of one on that particular bus we had. Mm -hmm. They did it, originally have a different bus they were doing the trial runs with. That one can hold two, but the one they use it now can only uh, hold one wheelchair at a time. So that, 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 that I don't know anything about that, Dr. Penfield. Yeah, uh, uh, I, when I was on the bus, I didn't actually notice that because I saw the side door, but they did speak to having the, the, the two wheelchair vehicle, and I'll call the fellow tomorrow and uh, inquire as to why it seems to be a bus different. All right. But because I talked to him on Monday when they were doing trial runs and, and they were trying to work out some mechanical issue, and I said, you know, I'm concerned, do you have a backup bus for this? If there's a mechanical problem, uh, you know, you, it's not going to be good if you say, well, the bus broke down and we don't have any bus for you. And he said, at the time, he said, we have one, but it's a 10 passenger bus and then takes a wheelchair. Well, today's was more than 10 passenger. So I just figured it was the one that they were planning to use. But I'll follow up with it tomorrow. All right, thank, thank you. you. Oh, uh, Representative Camacho. Um, I rode the bus today, but um, I hadn't checked my email yet. But in that email, is it like maybe like a schedule that we can print? Everything's in the email. The map, the schedule, everything. The schedule. I know. I know it comes every twenty. Minutes. It starts at seven thirty and comes every twenty minutes. So if you just add every twenty minutes, yeah. Um, is that it? Can I continue my notes? All right. So um, today we went to finance for T-shirts. So those will be coming soon as once we order them. I would tell you what's going to be on them, finance notes, but I don't have the picture with me, so you'll just have to be surprised. Um, but what we were thinking about in, in coming months, because it is getting colder, um, sweatshirts, but not just any sweatshirts. Uh, we talked about in, in our uh, executive council meeting on Friday that we'd be interested in your input in the sweatshirts. So my idea was to open the floor to you guys, not right now, I'm going to set like some kind of date, and if you could come up with like a graphic or something to fund them to go on the sweatshirt, and we'll have kind of like a contest, and the winning design will be made into our sweatshirt. Because I'm kind of tired of coming up with all the ideas, so I want to hear from you guys. So I don't know what the date will be. Probably, you know, let's go with December 5th. Let's go with the holiday party. You can submit anything you want to me by the holiday party, and we'll decide on it over winter break and have a new sweatshirt sweatshirt for you when you come back. So there you go. And that concludes my announcements, Mr. Thank you, President Becky. Vice President Hillary Costa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, so we had the class run-up elections last week, and um, we actually, luckily, every class is going to exist. We have no classes that didn't have any positions filled. So the sophomore class officers, President, um, your secretary, Gianna Auger, um, the vice president, Rachel Mial, uh, Secretary Nick Lima and our Treasurer Ashley Goldberg and we also have a new Parliament rep that will be joining us next meeting, um, Ashley Goldberg as well. For the junior class, um, the class was finally decided from the runoff election. The class officer council consists of Andrew Augustus as president, um, Katie O'Connor as vice president, Samantha Allen as uh, secretary, and Kevin Martin as treasurer and class representative. Yep. Okay, um, another thing, um, please keep pushing the petitions. Um, 
we've only had the last petition that was taken out was on October 11th, which is a big no-no. So we had one taken out today. Thank you for reminding me. How could I forget? Um, we had one taken out today, but previously to that, we know the last one had been taken out on October 11th. Um, so please keep continue to push those. All the residence hall seats are open except for resident at large and the new hall seats. So those are really easy to get. Most of those are actually under the 50 signatures, I think, except for City Hall. So those should be easy seats to get. Um, in other news, I need a communications director. Um, my, my former one has resigned, and I'm now looking for someone to fill that position. What I would be looking for you to do are um, advertisements. You'd be dealing with the anchor, Anchor TV and WXIN, um, getting liners to them, getting um, advertisements to Anchor TV and to the anchor uh, to really publicize us, and um, maybe working with student activities marketing to get us on the screens around Donovan or any other, other student spaces. I want you to have some kind of writing ability. Um, I want you to update our website, update our Twitter account, update your Facebook. Um, and this is a stipend receiving position on a monthly basis. If you are interested, you can come and sign up in the office during office hours. Um, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm ha I have a long um, period for when you can sign up only because um, last, when I first had sign ups, I only had two people sign up in the two week period and I really want to I really want to try and get the word out that it's that it's out there because communication director is a really good thing to put on your resume considering it's such a developing field in the real world. So if you know anyone that's interested or any of you are interested, feel free to come and sign up. And finally, I'm meeting with the Omni agency tomorrow to follow up on our mobile website. So I'll let you all know how that goes um, when we get back from Thanksgiving. And that concludes my announcements. Thank you. We'll move on to Secretary John Harco. Okay, um, so my first roundtable meeting was um, last Wednesday. It was <coughs> extremely successful. Um, we had 17 groups in attendance, 17 student organizations, and um, there were multiple people from each organization there, um, which I think that's the most student organizations in. I don't know how many years that have come to a round table meeting. 17? Nice. Um, and Katie Burke, Rob Santori, and myself made a presentation about event planning and event budgeting. Um, it was a great discussion. Um, there were a lot of questions addressed about co sponsoring, um, late night events, and advertising um, were a lot of the questions, a lot of the feedback that we got from student organizations. <coughs> My next roundtable meeting is going to be Wednesday, November 21st. Yes, I know that is the week of Thanksgiving. I know that. Um, but it's the only, it's really the only Wednesday that we could have it. It's the only time that we could have it um, for the rest of the semester. Um, so we'll see how many groups come to that one. But the, um, the topic for that one is going to be about advertising and promoting your student organization, um, which I we also got feedback about that from the student organization, so we figured we would make that topic. Um, what else? Mm, congratulations to us, to Rick, um, for our question, yes on question three. Um, great, awesome. Thank you for everyone who went out yesterday and voted, because voting is so important. Uh, and with that, concludes my announcements. Thank you. We'll on to Treasurer for the so I'm going to try to make my analysis as quick as possible because I'm going to be talking a lot tonight. Um, I have a financial allocation report that will be covered, and that's going to cover the bulk of what I need to talk to you guys about tonight. Um, budget packets are coming together slowly but surely after this next week's meeting. Um, anybody who's eligible for a budget, that next week's meeting is the deadline, um, then they'll be eligible to be part of the budget process, so that'll be fun. Um, we're contemplating going to a conference on March 2nd through the 3rd in New York City. Uh, I'm just, if anybody's interested in going, please let me know. We're trying to, right now the number is, the magic number is eight. Um, so <laughs> guys? Anyways, <laughs> um, we're trying to see who's interested in going. If anybody is interested, this would be a great learning experience if you want to move up in the organization, and by organization I mean us. 
Um, if you want leadership positions, like either the cabinet positions or an executive council position, you can learn a lot. Uh, there's lots of different, and you can look it up online as well. It's asgaonline.com. It's the NOVA New York uh, conference, and it has a schedule on there if you're interested. And if you have more questions, you can ask me or Kyla or any of the officers. Um, Rob is coming up with a spending report for the last three years, and so far my treasurer skills are looking pretty <laughs> nifty. Um, and I'm creating a conference planning report, and that's something, or a conference planning packet uh, that goes along with the conference attendance contract, so everybody knows what they're getting themselves into when it goes to, comes to going to a conference, because we want to make sure everybody knows exactly what they're signing up for when they attend. Um, and other than that, I have nothing, so thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your time. Thank you. I have a, a couple of leads. I have a lead from Representative Stephanie. Damn, I, 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 I will practice that. Um, but she cannot attend today's meeting. Um, there's really nothing else. She can't. She just can't attend. Her lead was that she has a class till 7:50, um, and due to the weather. Is there a motion to accept the lead? Motion by Representative Sanchez, second by Representative Pistol. Um, any discussion on our lead? All in favor? Judge Day. Is this a class that meets every week? Do, did it say? Yeah, I, I just, assume. Yeah, until 7 Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on our lead? No further discussion. All in favor, approve the lead, say aye. 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 All the polls say no. No. <coughs> Is there a division? Division. division. Okay. All those favor say I mean raise your hand. All in favor. All in favor. All in favor, please. Raise a mind, please. Uh, I don't know if you want the card. One, two, three. Your hand's fine. One, two, three, four. <laughs> raise your hand for now. One, two, three, four. Raise your hand for now. Point of information is um, what does this voting yes or no do for a leave? You would be rejecting her leave. It then becomes and it, it becomes one of It then becomes an unexcused absence, which it counts in your leave and in the leave count, and you only have so many days before you are expelled from the by the speaker from Parliament. But you only have so many excused and unexcused. Yeah. But if you have an unexcused absence, is that that's the same as that's, yeah. okay. Sorry, a leave? Okay. Yeah. It's it's all about how it goes into the record. You have you have three possible meetings that you can miss. <coughs> Accepted or rejected? It was rejected. Okay. But an account of uh, four to twelve. That was rejected. We're going to move on to another lead. Uh, Mark Adam, dear, dear Speaker Escobar, please excuse, excuse my not attending tonight's meeting. I've lost my electricity at home and my otherwise occupied with matters here. I've been meeting since you Mark Adam. Can we get a motion? Motion by Representative Terry, second by Secretary Auger. Any discussion on this lead? No further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 I'll say no. Extensions. This one comes from Barry Nickerson. Uh, dear Mr. Speaker and Parliament, it is with regret that I put in the leave for tonight's meeting. My uncle passed away, and my father is flying <coughs> from Florida. You will be arriving tonight, and I'm really thrilled about seeing him. I haven't seen him in years, so I'm sure it will be a most joyous reunion. <laughs> right. he, he put some quotation marks in my I wish to extend <laughs> congratulations to Marcy Diaz on her amazing purple score on the GRE. May Marcy's success inspire all of you who want to go to graduate school to reach for your fullest potential, because if you don't move forward, you'll always be stuck where you are. I'm looking forward to next week's meeting. Thank you all for understanding. It has been a hard time for me and my family. Best, Barry Nickerson, alumni representative. Motion. 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 Second. 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 Good talk. Uh, any other discussion on the leave? No discussion on leave, all those favors say aye. 
number, it ended up being about six and change, which brings us to the 300 number. And then all the Finance Commission approved operating budgets, which is that number of $15,530 added together. Um, and that deposit into all the separate organization accounts was $332,360.33. Minus the other finance commission allocations, which is conferences plus other, bring, brought us down to $227,077.47. And then we had a reverted escrow account from an open account over the summer, and that was $9,199.92, bringing the balance as of 10-25-2012 to $236,277.39. Um, Mr. Santuri and I recommended that Student Parliament and the Finance Commission proceed with caution with allocating funds for the remainder of the 2012-2013 year. And let me just tell you, I was told that number many times and I believe that I was right. Um, now I'm talking about the year, not even the general fund. Um, I guess this probably sounds like a lot of gibberish to people in the room and those who do know what it stands for probably are like, oh no, um, about to panic. Um, at least I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the thing is, when we get deposits, it seems like this fall semester's deposit is a lot less than we normally get. And there will be another deposit that comes in towards the end of the semester as people finish paying bills, people are on payment plans, etc. However, we get another deposit in the spring, which is also small. Um, it's still in the 200,000s, but if, say, we for some reason didn't get that deposit, as of right now, if Finance Commission, if the Finance Commission continued to allocate funds, we would not have money to give to the clubs in the spring. Um, we can't cover the difference as of right now if we don't get about another 330,000 in order to cover what's deposited in the spring, which is that 50% number, um, plus any operating budgets that come up along the rest of the year. So the issue that we're having now is where does this leave us as a body? Um, and it kind of leaves us in a financial state of terror, <laughs> my opinion. And something that I brought up to the Finance Commission today was that if we were on track to spend, uh, halfway through the semester, we've spent 62,000. For, for the rest of the semester, we would spend, theoretically, about 120,000, if that's, we're about halfway through, which would bring us up to 240,000 for the year. Uh, that's more than we have in our account right so it's kind of somber to think of the reality of the situation, um, but for the first time today, I can say in all honesty, and I've got people in the room who can attest to it, the Finance Commission had a lot of really great questions and actually a lot of thought-provoking questions, which shows me that they're taking this report seriously and means that there's going to, I, I hope that means that there's going to be a permanent change in the attitude of Finance Commission members. Um, I hope that they take me seriously and they're not usually ignoring me by having side conversations or texting on their phone or anything. They tend to be paying attention, actively participating in discussion, reviewing their packets, and they know what's coming at them. Um, even today, our very own freshman, Tyler Dean, mm -hmm. asked a question and I was like, thank you for participating. There was one of our members, Emily Gervais, a non-parliament student, actually asked questions about how the process works, what this budget, what this report means. The fact that people are actively thinking about it means that you need to actively think about it. And it, when it comes to budget hearings, it's going to be a really hard time to make that call and make those decisions. But we're allowed to allocate 90%. You're nuts if you're, you think that we're going to allocate the full 90. Um, that sounds rude. It sounds mean. It sounds crude, whatever you want to call it. But I need to be blunt and honest when I'm thinking about the fact that we can't allocate 90% because we don't know what we're going to be getting next year and I don't want to leave the position of treasurer up to the person who gets it for the 2013-2014 year in a state of disarray like other people have left it for myself. Um, and Rob's report is really going to highlight where spending is coming from and where the difference in allocations is from and I'm noticing that there were some major decisions that were made that truly do affect where our finance, which made where our finances stand, and as Kyla said, if I could call 2010, I'd ask for my money back. Um, but I don't think that's gonna happen, so we need to be proactive in our decision making, and that's basically what this report is trying, I needed this report to tell you, because 
we're going to have to make policy changes, which are coming to you tonight. Um, just one. And I don't want to go drastic, so I'm going realistic, trying to be nice. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to make this financial transition easier. I don't want anybody to be burdened, but I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page. I want everybody to understand if the Finance Commission says no, it's because of the state of the general fund. It's not because they don't like your organization. They don't like you. They have a personal beef with you. It's that we're being fiscally responsible and we have choices that we have to make. We have to say yes and we have to say no. There are times where it's going to be a good idea and there's going to be times when it's a bad idea. And they're doing their work on it. And I can say honestly that today it was literally, we had an aha moment. Somebody asked the trigger question and I was like, that's, it was, it was beautiful. I'm going to be honest. I, I gave a little bit on the inside, warm fuzzies. Because it just shows that if one person can understand what I'm talking about, then student parliament should be able to make progress with me. And I'm hoping that you all are on the same page. So with that, I'm torturing myself doing this. I'm going to ask that you accept this report with unanimous consent. Is there any opposition to accept the report? Okay. Wait. No opposition? So, suffice it to say, 
Uh, if there's any question, that's the whole purpose of this, is if there's any question as to where uh, funds are going for people that want to, you know, if it's worth it, uh, for people like me who actually want to work in the business, you can't put a price on that. Well, you can. <laughs> you should.
So we're hoping for funding so that we can like have money to do these kinds of things and help spread awareness. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about it? Any comments or questions from the members of Parliament? There's no further discussion. Do you have anything else to sort of include about your organization? No, uh, the only questions we had were about like what we were working with that. We'll talk Which, about that after. I got you. Yep. I got okay. you. Thank you. No further discussion. All those favor of approving this constitution say aye. Aye. All those say no. Do we have any uh questions? Any constitution passes? Congratulations. We're going to move on. We're going to move on to new business, the East New Organizations Committee Policy and Vision. Secretary John Otter. Okay, great. Um, so, this work and um, my two lovely other parliament members on my SOC committee, um, as well as myself, to talk about our policy and vision. Um, uh, we revised the Student Organizations Committee policy. Um, it has not been revised since 1978. So, um, we figured it was time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we changed just about everything. I think there might have been two sections that we left alone, but other than that, no, didn't leave alone. Um, so, I'll start from the top, I guess. Um, we added the little <coughs> section, right, the little sentence right at the beginning that says what the policy defines. Um, we also added um, authority because there was, I believe there wasn't a section in there about the, the committee's authority. Uh, and we also changed around the order of the sections because membership for some reason was at the end instead of at the beginning doesn't make any sense. Um, and I also, we added this, the part under membership about the cabinet position, um, and we changed section three, the review of constitutions, we changed everything, whether it was just because the wording was weird or it wasn't completely, fully defined. Um, Um, we left four and five alone. Um, we changed the only thing we no, not the only not the only thing, but some of the things that we changed in um, six and seven was we added like um, like do pretty much due dates, like time restrictions for getting reports in and stuff like that, because there really was no time restriction outlining this policy. So groups didn't know when they had to have things in by. They didn't know that they even had to have those things in. So um, that has that um, we added those things. Um, we also oh I do need a friendly amendment to change um, eight roundtable meetings. Um, just roundtable to one word instead of two. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I need to change in it. Any objections to friendly amendment? Understand. Um, so roundtable meetings, I added that whole section. It wasn't even in there. Um, and we left holiday party planning and the school year awards planning alone. Um, and also something when we were reviewing this policy, the original policy, it was directed towards two separate audiences. It was directed towards the student organizations committee as well as student organizations themselves. And it got really confusing. So. Um, we have we also have the student organizations policy, which is separate from the soft policy. So um, we are currently um, in, in process like of defining that policy and revising that policy, so that it's geared towards two separate audiences. This one is geared towards SOC itself, the committee, and the student organization policy will be geared towards student organizations. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, uh, is there any discussion on the, on this policy? We have our, I know we have, have you, anyone else that has a possible discussion policy? Okay, Vice President Costa. Two things. Mm -hmm. Everyone look at our freshmen. 
Tyler Dean in finance, bringing up questions and being an active member. <laughs> Carly and Alyssa revising policy, and they've been here only a First month. First meeting. First meeting. Look at life. our freshmen. You guys are wonderful, and your faces are red. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Gianna, how awesome is it? How awesome of a feeling is it to revise policy? Oh my God, it's when it hasn't been revised in a Now, but anyway, I just wanted to commend our freshmen and commend Gianna and, and Caitlin. So that's all, Mr. Speaker. Is there any actual discussion on the policy? <laughs> <laughs> that was discussion on the policy. <laughs> I just had a quick clarification. The last time the policy was. I think that we ate. What is that at the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 2009. I'm sorry. 2009. Oh, yeah. I thought I remember this time. Yeah, that's 2009. I'm sorry. I'm corrected. That's not corrected. Still, still, still worth revising. Sorry. Is there a point? Yeah. Um, do you know, in that case, what was amended in 2009? Or I, you I, didn't, I didn't know what was amended. Or Dr. Kane? If you oh, I, I know you I know you just borrow oh, this away <laughs> right in the, in the student government part of your brain. Well, um, Lawrence County and the second at that time, so I was a sophomore. Yeah. I'm going to say that it's a completely different policy. It looks like a completely different policy. Yeah. There's a few constitution that was a lot. That took a lot of work. It took a meeting and a half to full a full day. meeting and a half to review this whole thing, as well as the hour that we spent outside of the meeting reviewing it and revising it. Your credit will be duly noted in minutes. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Policy and action discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor of approving this policy, say aye. 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 All those say no. Abstentions? Oh, Treasure Day, and we will pass. We will now move on to conference policy revisions. Treasure Jordan Day, and President Kyle Peck is Okay, so funny policy and procedure changes. Well, first, maybe we should talk a little background. Okay. <laughs> so, um, in lieu of this discussion, you know, about the general fund, Jordan and I were kind of like, all right, what are we going to do about this? So obviously, there are many facets that go into our general fund. There are many things that we use our general fund for. So um, Jordan mentioned in her discussion of the report that she didn't want to leave the next administration with on, on the time ends, those ends. And that's my, I have similar intentions as that. So um, this is kind of like our first step. It's kind of like one of the preliminary, one of the easier steps that we can fix. Um, if you refer back to the conference report, you'll notice, I mean, I'm sorry, not the conference report, the budget report, um, that 62% of what we allocated this semester was on conferences alone. Um, and obviously, I'm all for conferences. I've been to conferences myself. But I'm just not comfortable with 62% of everybody's money on campus going to about 20 people. So um, we're, we're changing, actually we're kind of repealing what the changes were made last year. Um, so they're really not drastic, they're really not dramatic, they're just going back to the way they were. Um, and we understand that you know, in changing this, it's not a magic fix, it's not a, we're not erasing our problem right away. It's just one of the aspects that we think will help in future years in managing our budget and helping us spend wisely. So Trevor Day, would you like to explain what we changed? Yeah. Okay, so on page 12 and 19 is where all the conference policies are, and I'm changing two points under all the conference policies. The first point is literally once, um, and it currently states up to $1,000 per person with a maximum of $8,000 per group for one academic year, and I would like to change that to read, and it was approved by finance earlier today, just so that's unanimously, just so that's stated. Um, up to $800 per person with a maximum of $7,000 per group for one academic year. And then we would like to change six to read. Um, it currently says the Finance Commission will consider a student's prior conference attendance when, when making decisions. However, funded attendees will be left at the discretion of the Finance Commission. And we literally just added on a sentence that states the Finance Commission can only allocate funds to a maximum of eight attendees. Um, now that probably sounds bad to most people in the room, but it's not saying that only eight people can go. 
it's saying that we will fund four eight people and how much however you divide up the revenue is at your leisure as officers of organizations um, you can have 12 people go we're just not paying for the four um, at this time people are taking generally only taking anywhere from four to eight people um, and we're noticing that groups that are taking more are still they're barely hitting the cap um, and with the eight thousand eight hundred dollar per person limit if a person uses it entirely for it it doesn't there's I'm just gonna motion <laughs> motion to approve motion to approve I we have the second of the president back here with the session on the floor. I'm starting a discussion on this one, so I'm going to start with Representative Hill. Oh, so you say that eight people maximum would be funded. Funded. At 800. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest a friendly amendment of changing the maximum to 6,400. No. Because that's 800, 400 people. Yeah, may I respond yes. as to why I disapprove of it? It's friendly enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can, you can respond. <laughs> I didn't hear it. I didn't, can you respond? You want to change? Oh, hold on. Eight people for eight hundred dollars at seven thousand maximum. Mathematically, it's incorrect. It should be six thousand four hundred. And treasure day, you were talking. So it's not incorrect. Thank you for that. Um, eight hundred dollars per person is does not include food that's provided for these conferences. So we do need extra just in case we need to cover meals or any other incurring costs that do come along. Um, so we do leave some wiggle room for our people. We don't want everybody to be, their boot traps, straps are tight tight. I don't want anybody to be stuck. Um, 7,000 is where it was before. I'm literally just repealing what was added. I'm not looking to make anything crazy. None illogical. of this is new. This None is of this is used to be there. This was there when I was on finance two years ago, and I'm just asking that be brought back. Well, that way. So, there you go. Okay, uh, Representative Sanchez, do you have any further comments? Oh, no, that, that explains it. I was just, I thought it was just a typo. Okay, I didn't know there was added funds. Thank you. Okay, uh, Vice President Costa. Okay, um, I've never been on a club that planned a conference. I've never been on a conference through the funds of student community government and I've never looked at this um, policy. So um, I'm going to yield the floor to Treasurer Day to explain, I'm, I'm not sure what it means when it says, Finance Commission will consider a student's prior conference attendance when making decisions. However, funded attendees will be left at the discretion of the Finance Commission. What do you mean consider prior attendance? So if you've been to a conference four times and you've abused your privilege of going, the Finance Commission has the right to say, this person has gone too many times and we're not funding them. Oh, okay. Which has always been a policy that's not something that we've yes. No, 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 I'm not saying it's which, new, I just... Which, I, what's too many? I, I, I don't know, I, it's never been done, as far as I know. It's just there. I know it's, I know it's not something that's new, I just didn't understand the, why, what, like, what it meant. It mostly means that if they're considering, you can, if somebody's been to consecutive conferences and they don't have, like, a very, I won't say vital role, but if they're not an executive board member, and they've been personally, it's re it's reserved to those people who have abused the privilege of going on conferences, have gone, um, having actually gone to the conference, have or people who have been listed and backed out last minute. Yeah, um, it's never happened to my knowledge in the four years that I've been doing finance or financial business or being involved in student government. The only time it was ever questioned was with one conference, and there was a huge debate as to whether or not the finance commission had. The authority to do so, and it says it's positive. <coughs> so, <coughs> okay. Yeah. Move on to Treasure Day. Any further comments on this? No. So, you've asked for Yep. Uh, Representative Sintar? Oh, I was just going to make a clarification for Mrs. Sanchez. I uh, do. You the floor? And I see the Representative Sanchez back on the floor. Okay. Yeah, we got on what you were just saying. That's regarding all conferences or just the exact same conference that they went to multiple? All conferences, it's any student can, for any conference that they've ever been on, their prior attendance can be considered. Okay. Because I was just curious, it was like, if you refer to somebody who was the exact 
exact same conference every year, or it could if it's only in multiple organizations, they go to multiple different types of conference, like teaching conference, accounting conference. Yeah, that's why that's why it's evaluated. You know what I mean? Obviously, that's a that's a different scenario. If you don't let me answer, you yeah, just no. That's why it's a different scenario. It's more like what Jordan's trying to explain is it's more like you know. If you weren't necessarily part of a group and you just decided to tag along on that conference and be a member and then quit after you went to the conference kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? That scenario is what this is for. Yeah. And I, I was just going to add on to what you had to say. It, it's You can be part of three different organizations. You can be part of WXIN, the anchor, and SCG. And say for SCG, you don't attend any of the sessions and you're on the next request to go to another SCG conference. The people on finance should know whether or not you should have told that they should know whether or not you've been on those conferences before if you've actively participated in the conference um say you got lost and you were rude and mean to the conference organizers and there was complaints sent back that might be considered it's just all sorts of things that can pile up when the student's participation is being questioned thank you okay uh representative carlson so when it says 800 per person, I know that's just for an organization. Is that for, when it's 800 per person, is that apply to multiple organizations or just one organization? $800 per person applies to any organization, any okay. conference that you attend. So if you attend three conferences, your conference cap for that as a person is limited to $800. As an individual. As an individual. Okay. But as far as the organizations are concerned, if you go on three conferences and you're below $800, then you're fine. Um, if you go above that, though, you do have to pay whatever the difference is. And uh, there's one organization that I know for a fact goes over their per person limits usually, and that's, uh, uh, I don't care about saying it, it's RSA, because um, they usually attend three conferences. And so a lot of people who attend all three of those end up having to pay out of pocket or fundraising. Okay. Is there any further comments on this policy? With no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those say no. 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 Abstentions. Carlson. Representative Carlson. Uh, Representative Lima said no, and we have Representative Carlson, Representative Sanchez for abstentions. And the motion passes. And with that, we're going to move on to see law resolution. Deputy Speaker Ryan Benport. Okay. Uh, so me and my. Services Committee uh, came up with a parking lot C resolution. And it reads, whereas under the new parking plan, parking lot C has been converted from a computer lot to a faculty lot. Whereas during the semester, student parking has been difficult at peak hours. Whereas there has been a lack of faculty utilizing lot C. Be it therefore resolved that parking lot C be restored for new use. Sincere, sincerely, Ryan Bedford, Nathan T. Bissell, Shannon Carlson, Thomas. <coughs> <coughs> it's a motion by Deputy Speaker Rick Ben Clark and seconded by all by the committee members. By the committee members and sponsors. Yeah. Discussion. Vice President Costa. Um totally for this resolution, just kind of friendly amendment to change uh, that parking lot C be restored to community use. Okay. The body accepts that as well. Any opposition to friendly amendment? The friendly amendment stands up. Any further discussion on this uh, resolution as amended? With no. Okay. Representative Lima. I just want to say um, I didn't do a research tool. I don't have it in front of me. But uh, a number of years ago, there was discussion by uh, Parliament uh, to advocate for a new lot. And Lot C was the lot, I believe, um, as the result of that um, advocation by the uh, student committee government. So, um, I really urge the administration to consider um, having a lot C. It's a very important lot, for, especially for those um, with disabilities and need a handicapped spot um, next to the uh, communications and business environment. Vice President Nelson. Um One thing, I just had a question for any member of the Conditions and Services Committee because I know that I see that this was um, on your agenda. Um, if this passes through Parliament tonight, what is your course of action in, in getting the lot back for community use? Um, I understand it, it might be Mr. Gerhardt that um, does some parking. I'm, I'm not sure 
of bugs. That sounds about right, because he yeah. talked to us about implementing a new plan. Right, yeah, that's, that's why I kind of thought it was there. Um, um, so I'm looking to approach him and see if uh, what's the next course of action we can take to get, get it as soon as possible. Are you, is your committee, I mean, commission going to collect any data to kind of reinforce your cause when you present it to Mr. Gear? We can, we can, uh, we can do that at the next meeting and, and, and uh, figure out the best way to go about that. We'll try to go during peak hours and, and not so peak hours and see how many fathers are actually utilizing the lab. Uh, I'll look into that further. I'll let you know. I'll actually call them. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I, I think what I uh, just uh, to add on to our investigation, I believe uh, the council uh, the traffic and parking committee might have minutes on this um, for when the law C was created, and it might be discussion. So I'm on issue of service as well, so we will investigate okay. the traffic and parking committee. Is that? Yes. Okay. We'll get to that. Sure. No. Last C is what? Uh, what? Yeah. Right. The same. When was the last time that traffic and parking committee <coughs> met? Hasn't, hasn't been. Um, I, I was appointed on the committee. I have yet to see any communication um, from the committee um, about a meeting this year. So at least this year, as far as I'm aware of, they might try to contact myself. I was appointed as a representative. So it hasn't been Representative Sanchez? Does anybody know who the chair is of that committee? Mm, I don't have it in front of me. I can find out. I don't know. I'm going to throw this out to Parliament that uh, if anyone in Parliament agrees with this opinion, uh, to sort of maybe clean up the last sentence and make it uh, more of uh, how we usually write a resolution in terms of student recovery endorses our advocates. Uh, more specific language. I'll leave that out to you. Treasurer Day? Uh, can it be written, the last sentence reads, be it therefore resolved that student community government endorse, uh, I'm going, SEG endorse, endorses that parking lot C be resort, restored to community use. Is that friendly member accepted? Okay. Any further discussion on the resolution that was amended? With no further discussion, all those favor say aye. Aye. We'll all say no. We have extensions. We have Kevin Martin. And the motion passes. We're going to go on to updates and remarks. Administrative update. Gary Kemp, Mr. Speaker, uh, I just want to provide a little more information on the shuttle uh, service we talked about uh, earlier. It was an August <coughs> day. Uh, to start with, how many of you actually read the email that came out of Dr. Kane's office? Did you all see it? There's okay. So just about everybody. Uh, that email, same email, went to faculty and staff because the shuttle service is open for anyone on the campus. You don't have to. Identify yourself and just get on at the stops. Uh, the uh, attachment, the, the map of the campus, which shows the stops. Is it stop number one is Roberts. Uh, number one is Roberts, and so while it's a continuous loop, each morning at 7:30, it's sort of supposed to start from Roberts at 7:30. I chuckled this morning because. It's the first morning President Cariolo had decided she wanted to be the first rider on the bus. So I, I happened to extend that same invitation to your President Kyla here, but Kyla declined the opportunity. Tell them what time you want to be there. And then watch them laugh. 730. 730 in the morning. <laughs> Kyla said, I don't think so. I don't think so uh, at all. Uh, well, I wasn't planning to be there at 7.30. <laughs> at at 7.35, my telephone at my house rang. I answered the phone. It was uh, uh, Karen uh, Rubino calling, standing next to President Cariolo. Dr. Penfield, the bus is not here in front of Robert's Hall. <laughs> Where is the bus? I said, well, I don't have any 
idea was there last night when I drove through campus at all. Well, how do we find out? I said, well, I'll call security, see if the bus driver stopped, signed in at security, because they have to sign in at security. And uh, I hung up the telephone. I said, I'm not answering that phone again. Uh, but it showed up, but it had started from security and then it did the route, you know, through the residence halls and then Student Union Loop and so, so it was five minutes late getting up to Roberts Hall. But uh, uh, anyway. Uh, it's been off ever since too, right? It's been off ever since. <laughs> the uh, uh, remember, in case you get questions, because I know Jordan forwarded an email that came from the, the is it the president of RSA? Mm -hmm. Uh, with some suggestions already, and suggestions are welcome because really this these few weeks are an experiment. Uh, so any suggestions are uh, are uh, welcome. But remember, the bus stops at shuttle stops. Uh, it doesn't stop in between shuttle stops. And if people wave in the middle of a parking lot, you know it's not going to stop for them. Uh, or if somebody gets on the bus on the east campus and looks at his watch and says, oh, my class is in three minutes engaged and he's driving right there. It doesn't work that way. It stays, uh, it stays in the loop. Uh, and also, you may get some comments about that. Uh, you know, how, does it, uh, how does the schedule go? And, and uh, just explain that to them. The, uh, the uh, A-frame is pretty much all blue over today. I that that's temporary signage that we got up so we can get this service going. But as we move through, if this is going to continue, especially as we go into next semester, our intention is that there will be permanent pole signs in the ground that will have the triangular, triangular shape, I think, that will say shuttle bus. One of the suggestions was put that map of the campus on the sign so people can see see it right there because most people will carry a copy of that with them and uh, so we'll certainly uh, we'll certainly look at that am I forgetting something that I should be saying no. oh the route as we get experience the route is subject to change uh, one of the suggestions from the RSA person we won't change immediately is two stops in the residence halls once in front of new residence hall and then they just swing into the parking lot by security the suggestion was to drive up into L lot and sort of where Weber empties out into L lot right there to take the loop and that one of the signs be there. We'll look at these things as uh, as we get experience and go through it and, and there, there will probably be some tinkering uh, with the uh, schedule. But uh, it was important, I think, to get this up and running as quickly as possible so that we can have five or six weeks of experience before the end of this semester. And then, uh, assuming we're going to continue it next semester because we had to work through state purchasing, we have to go out for bid again in order to set up the service for uh, for next semester. But anyway, that's uh, the, the nature of my comments uh, on that. Uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We're going to move on to staff update. I just have uh, one item. Um, next. Friday. I'm not sure if you, the students know, but um, James Salvo, Vice President for Development and College Advance. Thank you. I don't know. I'm old. <laughs> so whatever it is now or what it was, um, that Vice President James, James Salmo, he's been before the board um, this board a few times in the last three years. Um, he's moving on and his. Uh, going away party kind of thing it will be Friday the 17th, but many of us will be on our way to Montreal. So my suggestion to the executive board is to uh, maybe get a card for next Wednesday. We can all sign it, and I'm sure Dr. Penfield will be there to serve it on your behalf. So that's my recommendation. Where is it? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's a. Uh, I think it's two o'clock on. Friday the 17th. So, have a card for next Wednesday. There you go. Is that good for you now? Yes. Okay, I kind of fast forward a little bit too quickly. We're going to go back to, I guess some people have a question potentially for you, um, Dr. Benfield. So, uh, Representative Sanchez? Yes, Dr. Benfield, regarding the bus, I believe it concludes at 9 30 p.m. Uh, you may want to consider extending that for the students in the social work area, or the 
Eastside campus where the classes end at 9.50 p.m. for a lot of them is also one of the reasons we're pushing for this because of the long walk, especially in the winter. They may want to consider adding maybe that one extra run. And also, we got in the Sherlock Center, and I believe it's the nursing building right next to building number eight. Number eight is right well, next to the center. That's not nursing, that's uh, oh, is it? Uh, the training program, so we call that. Oh, it's uh, a training program? Outreach. Outreach. Okay. Outreach is in that building. That if maybe as needed, especially with somebody with a disability trying to go to the Sherlock Center, that that could be uh, as needed, drop off.
So um, related to that, then, what will be the process to try to address some of those issues? No, we're going to have to talk to Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so you're going to pass resolutions, or are you just going to send? I was probably, honestly, to, about the tax acceptable thing, I was probably just going to contact Teresa myself and see, I mean, there's obviously going to be a reason why they did it, find out a reason, and then if not, so we can do about changing it. Um, a lot of them were kind of like simple fixes that we could like, they just didn't know the right person to contact, which I mean we do, so we can do that for them. Um, as far as the other things like glass removal, I think we're just gonna have to start brainstorming as an executive committee and see if there's something we can come up with and then come to Parliament and present it to physical plant or Teresa herself or something like that. So there wasn't like, there was a lot of things brought up, but there were smaller things that are easily fixed and then the things that can't really be fixed in a simple, kind of email um, we'll have to put more thought into. Okay, just so, I mean, I think the point is just having the town hall meeting and letting people talk about it and sort of making a record you might have minutes or whatever, but that's not going to do anything, oh, yeah. so we have to, have to, to come I think, decide which one to do. I think Vice President Casa is typing up minutes for this, yeah? Yep. Um, so when she has the minutes done, we'll probably go over <coughs> to Parliament and see if anybody in Parliament wants to tackle the resolution, because, reminder, you all have to write a resolution, otherwise you don't get your stipend. So, um, well, you can have a, uh, that's, that was that's you passed that. You <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you may know the truth. I believe that was the 2011-2012 session. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still a responsibility for Parliament members to fulfill. Well, we'll check into it. We'll check into it. We'll let you know. Uh, they go just to that year. Yeah. Well, you say that for issues of Parliament. Yeah. I recall. I recall you were just handwriting it, like in the moment. Well, we'll have to check back in the moment. I'm almost certain it was just for that year. But I do agree with that policy. Yes. <laughs> um, I believe it was. No check. Check. We'll check. Uh, I'm wrong. You're right. Whoops. <laughs> Any further comments? Well, I don't think. You. Okay. Appointment designation of vacancy is present. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, after I say these, I've asked that they accept with unanimous consent. Um, unfortunately, I have to expel Juliet Sadway from SOC for excessive absences. Um, I would like to appoint Julia Palmieri as the chair of the SEC, the new chair. Um, James resigned due to personal reasons. And I'd also like to appoint uh, Margaret Keach as the RSA representative. And finally, he's been serving on this committee, but I'd finally like to appoint him. I guess I forgot about it. Jose Rodriguez Mendez on the committee, Vision 2015. That's it, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you. So, uh, all those appointments, except for unanimous consent? Yes. Let me move on to issues of Parliament member. Roger Carza. I want Parliament, but I'm going to go first. Um, 
But you only get really one shot of college. But if you're deciding to be uh, participating in this community, this is potentially one of the only chances where you're going to actually represent you know, your friends, constituents. You, know, you could actually help people um, if you want to, especially if you're here. And I hope that if you took the time, like they either get elected or through the petition, and you, you come here, I hope that you kind of have that passion and maybe want to improve our community, improve our college. Um, and actually have your voice heard. And I just feel that, you know, Parliament's been just a little, you know, we, we need Red Bull. We, need, we, we just need one big, huge Red Bull for everybody to sort of energize us and get us back to work. Because student community government, our corporation, our government, we are only as strong as, not the executive council, we are only as strong as our Parliament members. Our Parliament members are key. Our problem members are key in actually getting out the voice of the students. Without you guys actually bringing issues that you guys care about, then why why do we meet Wednesday at 7 o'clock? <coughs> Otherwise, we're just going to be hearing from President Pacquiao and Treasurer Day on their policy changes and you know just bring up whatever they can concern them. Um, I I I'm very happy in seeing you know certain resolutions come by co-sponsorship, very happy about that. But I think they, they're minor issues. I think they're bigger <coughs> issues as a whole that we could tackle. And I hope that you all agree with that. And if you're bored every single Wednesday, there's only two options. You can either make it more fun for yourself by being more active in this body and have that little feel good feeling by maybe bringing a resolution of helping students, or there's that option of just resigning because sitting here and just occupying the space is not going to move strengthening government around college board. Uh, one shot of being representative. You know, you, I, I hope that when you guys graduate, you guys want to look back on your time here in the government and be like, you know what? Yeah, I did this and this and this, and I actually improved my college, and I'm so proud as an alumnus today. That was my message. That was my little issue. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to the Secretary General. Um, okay. So, the only thing that I have to talk about is I'll see for a couple minutes after the meeting. Just if you could let me know whether or not you're coming to the holiday party, um, I'll check you off on the list. Um, if you don't know, then just let me know before, like, uh, I forget what the date was. The 23rd. The 20th, November 23rd. Which I know, Thanksgiving recess, I know. 21, 21st. 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 Uh, last week during that awful hurricane that we had, I didn't receive an email saying that classes were canceled. I did receive a text. But I didn't receive an email, and I wasn't sure if um, if it was policy that a text and an email and phone call had to go out, or if you get a text message and don't get an email, or what if you could I don't know our, clarify or our emergency procedures indicate that the college will communicate using all of those uh, means why the email wasn't sent to Okay. I didn't know. Whatever you said. No. All right. Just because I figured a lot of people lost power, and yeah. I don't know. Some people don't get text messages, and it was, I would have been pretty upset if I came all the way to campus from somewhere, and bam, class is canceled. So that was the only reason why. But thank you. That's it. Thank you. Representative Piaz. Um, just letting everyone know, programming is hosting the um, zombie apocalypse next week. It's going to be a giant game of tag, a two-day long game of tag. We've got awesome bands made of everyone on campus is going to know they're playing. It's going to be great. We have a great t-shirt, so bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Representative Camacho. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have two issues. Um, one is about the, bus, the shuttle buses. Um, I'm not going to complain, but like, how come though there's like a stop at Brown, stop at New Hall, like it's right next to each other? I was wondering if maybe like if, if they would be treated by it, we can maybe add like another stop, maybe to the back of Weber and Willard, or maybe to the suite, just in case, because I don't know why 
down too long. Because you would have to go in the parking lot, and I think the concern was traffic flow. Okay. So the reason it made the loop to Brown was so you could come down the stairs right. from Weber. Right. And um, the other issue is, um, is there any update um, on the guest passes to, um, for the rec center? Not yet, no. Not yet? All right. I'll let you know, though. All right, definitely. Hey, thank you, Speaker Escobar. Uh, just, I'll let uh, Vice President Cost uh, this to she, as she sent, when she sent the email early this week from Parliament, uh, included was that 9.7 WXIN and a number of other clubs will get anchor TV <coughs> programming, naked newspaper, and a couple of sororities and fraternities like Kappa Delta, Alpha, uh, Data Fight, Epsilon, Zeta, Zeta Delta. And the guy and of other clubs like communication clubs, chess club, and heads are all right now live with the 32 hour radio on for Gloria Gemma. All proceeds are going to Gloria Gemma, and we're just going to pass around this box. If you guys, I know some of you already donated, that's great. If some of you haven't, you don't have to, but it'd be much appreciated. Just give me all proceeds, not one dime is going to us, all proceeds are going to Gloria Gemma, and we also want to just say. On behalf of all the clubs who are doing the radio thon, a big thank you to President Cariello, who came to the studio earlier today and also donated $135 for to Gloria Gemma. That's a really great uh, donation on her part. We're really appreciative of it. So, yeah, I'm just going to pass this around, and that's why I have to have the pink box for the entire night. <laughs> but yeah, and I just give back to you. Uh, I'll just let it go around the room, hopefully. Just give back to me, and I appreciate any donations. <coughs> Okay. Uh, Representative Carlson. Two things. Um, one for Dr. Kane. I will second what um, Representative Burke had said. I had received an email. I did purposely sign up for the text messages knowing that there was a storm coming. I didn't receive a text message, so I don't know uh, what was going on through that. But I definitely did follow the steps that was um, online and through an email to do that. So just letting you know. Um, not sure if I can, if you can direct me to anyone else to really speak to about that. The, well, the emails are, uh, are supposed to be sent by the director of web communications. Um, so I was going to follow up with her. Okay. And second, I just want to remind everyone that um, programming has Montreal. We leave next Friday. We have a few tickets left. Um, $145. If you are interested, talk to me, talk to Representative Diaz, talk to Mr. Pelucci. And that means my time. Thank you. Representative Kevin I just uh, share Representative Burke and Carlson's uh, concern with the email, but I feel as though it's already been issued, so all set. Thank you. Treasure Bay, you're alive. Oh, you're not the last one. Treasure Bay. I got three things. One, I really like the anchor's redesign. It looks like Hillary had something to say. I thought um, I'd put my name on the list, but it's not. You told, you told me to well. cross it off. No, 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 no. I was motioning. C lot petition as he mentioned the petition process. I thought you were gonna cost the cost the put on the list. Exactly <laughs> that. Yeah. So I wanna say I really like the anchor redesign. I really like the cover today. I was really impressed, so I wanted to let them know. I may not always agree with their content, but I do generally agree with their design. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to talk about was I was wrong when I said I lied. On page 8 of 8 of the Student Community Government Parliamentary Procedures Parliamentary Rules, under Duties and Responsibilities and Rights of Parliament Members, item I, to present or co-sponsor at least one resolution to Parliament before signed by per academic year in which its purpose is to improve Rhode Island College student life. So I guess I can't withhold your statements until the spring. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you should write one anyway. Then the third one, thank you, Gianna, for your handy dandiness. Um, this has been, in, a, in the past, and I think this is kind of what Speaker Escobar was talking about, is that in the past there has been clear sides when it comes to issues. Uh, who picks who, who's going to vote for who, who's going to vote for what. Um, this is not a battleground. This is a work environment. We're here to work with each other, be progressive, and have conversations and open dialogue. Nobody here is going to yell at you if they disagree with well. I can't say that's true, but I know I'm not going to yell at you. I might get a little intimidating and scary and loud, but I'll always listen to what you have to say at least. Um, I may not agree with it, but I'll always listen, 
and everybody else in the room should have the same attitude that they will always listen. They won't sh automatically shut down because you disagree. Um, I've had very open conversations with multiple people in the room about policy and procedure. And if you know anything about me or President Pecchia or Secretary Auger or Vice President Casar and so on and so forth, you know that we're all interested in making sure that Rhode Island College is a better place than where we started. We leave it better than when we started. Um, this is not a battleground. This isn't who picks who, who's going to agree with who. Whose side am I on today? Um, we're here to work together, and it's a collaborative effort. So if you ever feel like there's a war on you, or you feel like there's a specific side that you stand on, you shouldn't feel that way, because there are no sides when we're here in Parliament. We're here together, and we're one united front. Um, we are here for the students, and that's our main cause. I don't care what your other causes are. You're here as a student to represent the students, and I've spoken up, and I've even contacted people more this year than I think I've ever done in my entire college career on what student concerns are, and that means that I personally am improving, and I'd like to see that from everybody. So if we can all work together instead of saying, whose side am I on today, or are we going to vote this down, or are we going to approve this, or are we going to amend it, have an open discussion, an intelligent discussion, and make sure that it's progressive instead of setting us back another 50 years, because we don't need to be in conversation for 20 minutes over something that's not going to change if it's going to be redundant conversation. So that's all I have. Uh, Representative, um, I just wanted to regard it. Um, I received a text message actually from a different company 20 minutes before I received it from Brett, stating that Brett canceled. I mean, it was WBRI.com sent me a text message 20 minutes before Brett, which was, I thought, a little bit humorous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a new station, they need to be updated. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I just it was funny that somebody else from a third party. Okay. Uh Vice President you are the last on us. Okay. Um actually I'd be a little shocked if Rick reported closings before our new station did, so I don't think that's funny, I think that's accurate. But whatever the case may be. Um, one of my things, we brought up the town hall meeting in Dr. Kane's discussion, and um, I'll be honest right now, my off-campus job kind of um, killed me. Um, I asked for the night off when I scheduled the town hall meeting, and they didn't give it to me. Um, I work at a hospital, so they need, when they need staff, they need staff. But I actually made the effort to get out of work early, and I got up here as soon as I could to go to the meeting. And to my dismay, when I walk in, there are there was only one parliament, there were two parliament members present, Mr. Lima over there in the corner, and Mr. Sanchez, out of over 20 members of student parliament, and my executive council, um, uh, President Pecchia and Treasurer Day were there, thankfully, to run the meeting. I put out a reminder email regarding the town hall meeting, but apparently that was just kind of brushed aside. Um, we've been, to echo the sentiments of Speaker Escobar and Treasurer Day, we're here for the students, and on Sunday night, we weren't there for the students. We were there with small representation, and that's fine, but I would have liked to see more there. Um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that I'm gonna make the next one mandatory, but I really would just like to see um, more come to the meeting next time. Um, I understand that I wasn't there for the bulk of it. I'm not making excuses for myself. I should have tried harder to get someone to cover my shift, but um, that's what I have to say on that. Um, echoing the sentiments of Representative Santuri about the uh, breast cancer radiothon, I was on from 6 to 7 p.m. today um, for the radiothon. It's something that really personally touches me, and I think Breast cancer and cancer in general is a is a disease and a, a front that affects everybody, someone uh, in this room or everybody in this room maybe. Um, so please try and support that within the next two days. They have an event at 9 p.m. tomorrow at the Rough Stone, a benefit um, party. So make sure to go out to that if you can. Suggest a donation at the door. Um, and also careful to you all driving. Um, I'm getting texts from mother that it's really awful outside. 
and it's like 100% chance of precipitation throughout the night. So to all you commuters out there, please be careful. And that concludes my announcements. Motion. We have one more. <laughs> oh, I gotta be that guy, I know. But, uh, i just like to make a, a point that um, I believe the previous Vice President, uh, my brother, when he did the town hall meetings, he had them on, you know, weeknights, and I, I'm just going to point out there that there's, even if it's a third, uh, Sunday night they had it, there's a lot of kids that they are part of the dorms, I know it was for the dorm life, but <coughs> But there still are a lot of kids that go home. So having it on a weeknight, on a school night, so that it's gonna, you know, it's just gonna benefit. A little bit. I think Representative Gleam is gonna make the point that I'm about to make. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You put up a card. All right. I know uh, we're not supposed to be responding to each other in open uh, forum. There's a policy on this. Um, it should be in the packet. You can read up on it. Um, I just like to say two things. Uh, comments um, from. One on the um, resolution, um, I guess that I was mistaken. I get that confused with the, uh, the council um, policy that was passed last year that required everyone on parliament to join one group council. Um, that was just for the 2011-2012 year. I do strongly urge parliament to fill all council committees, all college council committees. I think it's that is a direct or what that. And another thing, um, the reason why you know, I consider the town hall meeting to be successful, I certainly are. Uh, we had it on a Sunday. Uh, we just realized, yes, many students do real leave campus on Thursday night. Um, but we figured a lot would get back on Sunday and have nothing to do. Um, and then we knew there's no classes on Sunday nights, things of that nature. Um, so that's why we had it on Sunday, just to try something new. That's all I have to say. And motion Second. Jesus Christ. Motion turned by Rosalie, second by Treasurer Day. All those favor with adjournment say aye. Aye. All will say no. Extension. Everyone play seat. Please stay seated for a while. Our place. Kyla Peckett. Here. Hillary Crossland. Here. Fiona Auger. Yep.